see at the end of the day the shares purchased by the parent and the subsidiary is ultimately an investment and the investment is going to be covered by accounting standard 13. so although the effect of the dividend paid by the subsidiary is given at the time of consolidation but the treatment of dividend is not covered by accounting standard 21. the treatment of the dividend will be covered by accounting standard 13. basically whenever someone says that we receive dividend from our investment in shares we understand dividend as an income and because dividend is an income we will like to credit it to the profit and loss account however accounting standard 13 is very clear whenever you are receiving dividend or for that matter any income from your investment you should check whether this dividend is for the period before we acquired the investment or whether this dividend or the income is for the period after we acquired the investment for example, you may buy shares and you are receiving dividend. Our normal tendency is credited to the PL. You buy debentures, let's say you are investing in debentures, you are receiving debenture interest. Our normal tendency or our normal accounting view is okay, let us take to the PL. If in the trial balance you read dividend received, you will like to credit it to the profit and loss account. But then that is not exactly the requirement of accounting standard 13. As per AS 13, you should identify whether the dividend or the interest that you are receiving is for the period before you acquired the investment or is it for the period after you acquired the investment. If the income is for the period before you acquired the investment, then such income cannot be credited to the PL. Such income is considered to be a recovery of cost recovery of cost means such income should be credited to investment account let us understand this point but with reference to consolidation let us say there is a company a and it has acquired 80 percent shares of b let us say we are buying these 80 percent shares on 1st april 2019 okay and then let's say on 1st May, let's say on 1st May 2019, B Limited, B Limited pays dividend, pays dividend for, for 2018-19. Let's say this is the information that we have. We want to know that how this dividend will be treated by us. A has acquired 80% shares of B, so we have a parent subsidiary relationship. But remember, 80% shares that you are buying ultimately is an investment. Investment accounting will not be done by AS21. AS21 is only for consolidation. As far as the investment is considered, I'll follow accounting standard 13. Now, as you can see, on 1st April 2019, you are buying shares. On 1st May 2019, B Limited is paying dividend. Right. If B is paying dividend, understand, if B is paying dividend, 80% of dividend, 80% of dividend is received by A. So the parent company will receive 80% of the dividend. What do we normally do? The moment we see dividend income, we will like to credit it to the PL. But accounting standard 13 is clear. AS 13 says that please check is this dividend for pre-acquisition period or is this dividend for post-acquisition period? Now, you acquired the shares on 1st April 2019, right? That's your acquisition date. And the dividend is for the period. Just see, dividend is for the period 2018-19. That means the dividend is for the year ended 31st March 2019. So you are buying shares on 1st April 2019, but you are receiving dividend for the period before the acquisition date this dividend is pre-acquisition pre-acquisition dividend will not be credited to the pnl it will be credited to investment account in other words whatever is the cost of buying shares in the subsidiary that cost of shares should be reduced the investment is an asset an asset will have a debit balance we are planning to credit the investment account so the cost of the investment will reduce so we should credit this to the investment account you do not have a right to participate in this dividend 
I offer another access to understand this. See, on 1st April 2019, you are buying shares. Now, if you will buy shares on 1st April 2019, you are paying for the net assets which has been earned or we can say the net assets which have been built by the subsidiary up to 1st April 2019. Those net assets will also include the profits that the subsidiary has earned. So when we are buying shares on 1st April 2019, we are also paying for the profits that the subsidiary has earned till that date. We are paying for those profits. The profits for which we have paid out of that profit only, now you are receiving dividend. I hope you get my point. When I'm buying shares of your company, I'm paying for the profits that you have already earned. Then you are saying that, okay, out of this profit, Ashish, now I am giving you dividend. So I have already paid for that dividend. See, I have already paid for that profit. And the profit for which I have paid from that itself, you are paying me dividend. That is the reason we are saying that this is nothing but recovery of cost. You earlier paid for that profit. And from that profit, you are getting dividend. In other words, that profit is now returning back to you. So credit the investment account over here. Okay, let's take another possibility. It is 1st April 2019 and let us say on 31st March, think in this way, on 31st March 2020, B Limited pays dividend. B Limited pays dividend for 2019-20. You are buying shares on 1st April 2019, right? That means I have every right to participate in the profits earned in 2019-20 and the dividend is for 2019-20. Dividend is for the period after you acquired the shares. If the dividend is for the period after you acquired the shares, then you have every right to participate in the dividend. This dividend should be credited entirely to the profit and loss account. So this time, whatever dividend that you are receiving is for the period after you acquired the investment. So let it go to the p and of A. And finally, the last possibility. I just changed the date. Instead of 1st April, we have purchased shares on 1st July. A Limited buys 80% shares of B Limited on 1st July 2019. And then I take the same situation. On 31st March 2020, B Limited is paying dividend for 2019-20. It's very interesting. I'll pick up again, let's say. A, buying 80% shares of B on 1st July 2019. And B is paying dividend. Okay, dividend is for 2019-20. Now, 2019-20, that means dividend is from 1st April 2019, 1st April 2019 to 31st March 2020. And it is on 1st July 2019 that the shares have been purchased. So in this situation, accounting standard 13 will require the allocation of dividend. Okay, the first three months dividend shall be pre-acquisition, the dividend for the months of April, May, and June because I am buying shares on the first day of July. So what AS13 says is that, see, the first three months dividend, first three months dividend, it is pre-acquisition. If it is pre-acquisition, you should credit investment account, okay? And the last nine months dividend, that will turn out to be post-acquisition. Post-acquisition, you should credit profit and loss account. So this time a bifurcation of the dividend or rather I will say an allocation of dividend into pre and post will be necessary. 